I think people don't understand the advantages of having a business. There are a lot of advantages. I mean, a, a, a large amount of advantages. And some of those being that you can write off things that you couldn't necessarily do if you had a hobby. going on ladies and gentlemen we got another yes. show going on for you guys i know y'all are happy to see us again it's been some time you know how we do this is how i talk i'm your host i'm the star of the show one of them my name is chris if you don't already know if you didn't know now you know hey my name's tim and i am what he did he say he was a star i don't know guys we're, that is yet to Easy. be determined uh i think i could do this by myself but i always want a sidekick Everybody needs sidekick. Superman. No, he didn't have one, right? Batman, but Batman Robin. had Robin. <laughs> There's Robin over there. Man, you don't so watch superheroes too to, much growing up. I had to bring a Robin in. Hey, but guys, we are ready and excited. Back to you live. I'm coming again from outer space to your place. I got a lot to say. I'm looking forward to it today. Okay. What you got, Chris? All right. Well, hey, we like to get into the topics. Let's get into the meat and potatoes and everything. But before we do that, we got to do some housekeeping. So first things first, you guys are watching our show, our podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and like. Go ahead and comment. Go ahead and share with your friends. Because what we got is jewels, baby. Well, mainly me. But you know what I mean? You got to let other people know about the content hey, that you're getting for free. Yes, we love free. free. Come see. Hey, did you see the last show? Did y'all see the last show? That was the show. You said it wasn't that great, Chris. That was the one he was popping on. You got Look, you see that hater. joke. See, he was, he, he he was popping on that gonna stuff. Have he got his arms crossed in the back. Guys, if you only know behind the scenes what I got to hey, do to get actually, this guy ready. He was, he was actually <laughs> filming that. He alive together. You should see it. Look at it. He don't want to put that one off. You guys go the thing, check it the out. The things I got to do to out. get you ready. What did we talk about? What did we talk about? I forgot. What he got to get all ready. He got to comb his hair, do his makeup. All <laughs> the, like, come on, he was sitting back like this. He want to be sassy. He like being a sass head. We're well, ready, let's guys. Go ahead and get into it. You ready? Let's go ahead. I'm He's ready. all amped up because this is his favorite part of the day of the week. He loved doing this. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get into the podcast. The topic for today is a side hustle versus a business. What is the difference between a side hustle and a business? Okay, let me rephrase that. Okay, what is the difference between a hobby? in a business, okay? There's definitely a difference between the two. You can say hobby, you can say side hustle. You, and then of course, there's the business aspect of it. But what differentiates between those two different things, right? Because Tim and I, for context, we both have been in those boats of creating stuff in our past, right? Of course, we understand what it takes. We've been in both different situations. So we understand what it takes to go from a side hustle into a business and what it goes from a hobby you can say to a side hustle and then to a business because there could be three different steps going along. But we really want to unpack that question. What is the difference between a side hustle and a business? So, Tim, go ahead and kick it off for us. Give us some context and then we'll I, go from there. Here's my, here's my context, guys. I know you, some of you may have a side hustle, hobby or whatever you may want to call it. And some of you have businesses and you may want to take your side hustle, your hobby to a business. Or you may have a business that you may say, hey, I just want it to be a hobby. But hey. Here's how we can tell the distinction of the difference. When you have a, let's say, a, a recreational hobby or a side hustle or anything like that, one of the things is that you won't have profit with it. Your goal is not profit. If you're just doing it to have fun, if it's just something that you like to do, then that's probably a hobby. If it's not making money, it's probably a hobby. Uh, <clears throat> if you're not doing those type of things, it's probably a hobby because a business, the goal the goal of the business is to make money, to generate revenue. That's the goal of the business. And if you're not doing that, then it's not a business. A business would have profit and loss. And that's exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to gain profit. You're trying to make money. And then that will be reflected in many ways. So that is a high level 
uh, definition of if you want to know if you have a side hustle, do you have a hobby, or if you have a business? That's the first question you need to ask. But there are other things that you need to ask as well. You need to find out whether or not you're uh, putting this on your taxes. Are you taking what you do as your hobby, whatever that is, and you're getting a little revenue off of it? You may be putting some money in your pocket and you may be enjoying the fruits of that. It may be a couple hundred, whatever. I don't know, whatever you get from it. And you're going, I make money. Yeah, okay. Now the question is, is that reported on your taxes? Because sometimes people say, I make money. I get money from my side hustle, my business, my hobby. And you find out they're really not making money. And you say, well, how, how is it I'm not making money when I'm sitting in here with a few hundred in my pocket? Well, you may have not taken all of it into account all of the expenditures that are with that. So if you don't take into account all of that, then you really don't know if you're making profit or not. You don't know if you're making a loss because you're not keeping track of everything that will allow you to know whether or not you're making profit. So you're saying, I'm going out there, you're making sales. Let's say you're in some type of sales. You're making sales of uh, uh, ribbits or divots or whatever it is you have. You're making sales, you get that money back and you're going, hey, I made some money. You, 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 you bought a product from a store, you flipped it and you got an extra $50 for it. Hey, I made some money. Uh, whatever, however you do it. But the thing is, you're not keeping track of how often I do that. You're not keeping track of the expenditures, uh, what, what it took as far as my time. You're not keeping track of whether or not how long I had this thing in inventory. You're just not keeping track of things. And since you're not keeping track of things, there's really no accurate record. And without the record, you really can't tell if you're making profit or loss. You're just simply guessing. And you need records to be able to do that. So I would say that's one of the things that you have to keep accurate records. And if you without them, you don't even know if you got a hobby. You don't know if you got a business going on at this time. So more than likely, all you guys ever have is hobbies as opposed to business because it takes a while to transition those. Do you well, well, big fella, we, we're gonna stop right there because oh, you're oh, on a tangent, big fella. Uh -oh. <laughs> what you got to say? You got people listening, they're trying to take notes, man. Take it's the some notes, good stuff. they listen. Hey, I tell the people just put me on pause, baby, and write, and then put me on play. <laughs> See, that's how you do that. Now, I'm Ooh. giving you a secret because I'm right. I give you my information and it comes out, baby. It just pops out. You know why? Because I'm like rapid fire. Pa, 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 pa. Okay, get this guy off the show. <laughs> Okay, let, 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 let's, let's kind of unpack what you just stated there. I think that's very important because I was saying the younger crowd, you know, in my, my generation or the generation uh, after me, uh, a lot of them are into the side hustle, the, the gigs and, you know, the ways of making uh, another stream of income. And I think a lot of times when I'm talking to people of my age or younger than me, and we're, and we're talking about side hustles and and things of that nature, I think one thing is, is very, very true is that, you know, they're getting money. They, they could get money through Venmo. They could get money through Cash App. They're getting cash in hand. You know, they're making all this different type of money through their side hustle. But the thing yeah. is very much so true is that while they're making that money, they're not tracking. In a business, in a, in a way, and for a business to be profitable or a business to be successful, you have to right. track it. You have to track it. How are you going to know that, you know, what you're doing is making money. How do you know how much you're bringing in every month? How do you know when your uh, slow times are? How do you know when your most profitable times are? These different trends are these different ways that you can measure transactions and, and, and conversions and all those different things allows you to understand, okay, is my company on pace or on track to go where it needs to go? And another thing is also when you're not doing taxes, you're really not a business. You're running from doing taxes, you're not a business. Because, you know, the government is going to eventually catch on. And if you want to be a business, you're going to have to use that. See, what happens Hold is up, people don't have to. Hold up, little Go fella. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Big fella's got to say something. Now, I wouldn't say that the government would eventually catch on. The reason they probably won't catch on is because you're not making any significant money. If you're not making any significant money, the government will probably never, ever care. Probably even never find you out. If you're making $1,000 a month, you're not making any significant money. So the government's not going to even look at you. You won't even be a blink in their eye. Uh, you can say This is not advice a, we would recommend. Yeah, well, he's saying that advice. I wouldn't recommend this. I'm not saying do this, but what I'm saying is your $1,000 or $2,000, they're probably not even caring about that because it doesn't show 
as far as in your bank account. Uh, and if your business is a cash transaction, they'll probably never even know. They'll probably never even know. Um, the only way they'll find out is it's, and this is where if you're trying to translate into large sums of money, they'll find out based on your spending habits, even if you spend cash, uh, because you, what you happen to do is people say, well, I bought, let's say my car in cash. If you spend over 10,000 cash, you're going to be flagged by the government. So you can't spend 10,000. Let's say you bought it for 5,000 or 6,000 or whatever. You bought your car in cash and they don't know anything about it. What happened is when you go to register that car, when you register vehicles, you register stuff in your name because it has to be in your name to drive it and stuff like that. That's when they'll start to catch on and catch you. So you have to be careful when you go to doing stuff like that because of these reasons. So I would tell you always file your taxes because it's better for you in the long run you're going to have uh, those taxes will go against you'll get self-employment tax, things like that. But guess what? When it comes time to retire, that will show taxes paid into the government, stuff like that. You have a larger check in the end. You're going, well, I don't care about that. If you don't care anything about those things, then I would say, yeah, OK, but well, then you'll, you'll get away with it for a while. But you'll still be a hobby because you won't make any significant money. But you go ahead, Chris. Uh, see, what you said is yeah, what you said is true. But I also say. Mm -hmm. The way that things are going right now with Biden, right? Certain things that he's introducing. This is why I say that you you could be caught. You got to be careful. While your business not might may not be set up as a corporation, you have to be mindful of that. So whenever I'm saying that is, hey, what Biden's trying to do is he's trying to add Venmo. Yeah, he's trying to add cash. cash yeah. He's trying to do all those things he can show where money is being made. So if he's able to catch on to those transactions and he wants to hire more people for the IRS. Well, hey, guess what? They're going to catch on. Where is this money coming from? For what purpose? I keep seeing these thousand dollars. Yeah. If your business is a side business bringing in 20,000, they're trying to track everything. Business is That's trying true. to track everything. Our government is trying to track everything. So you've got to be mindful of that. Uh, Tim, are you going to pay attention in the podcast? Sir? I am. I'm paying attention in the podcast. My, my, hey guys, what's happening is my computer is going down. I'm looking for a plug. I, I, I can't find a working plug, but I hear everything you're saying. I'm well, trying to find a plug. We'll just, we'll just pause it. Okay, let me find a plug. Woo! All right, well, we are back on. We're back now. Action. I'm back. I'm working. <laughs> my computer is going. I'm ready now. We had a little malfunction really. going on, but we are back in business. So, like I was saying, let me go back to what I was saying for the audience that was listening Trust to me, me to wrap it up. It is the taxes it. are the important. Point. They got to make sure that they're doing the taxes, whether it be a side business or if it's a, a, a side hustle or if it's just a business. Either or, that's the things that they need to do. Your point two, Tim, what's your second point? What is your second thing you want to share to the audience? Oh, you throw it back to me now. <laughs> you I don't have what nothing. I need to say. That means you don't have nothing, people. But I guess what? Plenty. I do. I got plenty for you. Besides that, you need to intend, does it the time and effort reflect profit? You need to know whether or not your time and effort that you're putting into this thing, does it reflect profit? And do you do you depend on the income that you're receiving from this thing? to be utilized in your life uh, as activity to survive. If you're depending on it, then it may lean toward more of a business and you need to, uh, you need to reflect it in such manner. If it's not dependent money, meaning it's just, hey, I just use it as side money to get over a little bit here and there, then you're not dependent on it. Is it something that's gonna be used to help pay your rent, your light, your car. I mean, are you using it specifically? I need this money to survive. And if so, then you need to structure your thing more as a business as opposed to a hobby. So I'm giving you that advice. And whether or not you alter your model. See, whether or not, here's, how, here's, here's, a, here's another one. If you have a hobby, you will not alter it or change it in any form or fashion to make profit or to bring in more income. You won't alter it. You'll keep your same model, your same process. You'll keep everything the same. You won't change anything because it's not about profit. It's not about making money. And since it's not about making money, you're not gonna tweak it any. You're not gonna tweak what you do. 
to say here, here's something that would do would be more streamlined. Here I need to outsource this, bring in this. You're not looking to do that because you got a hobby. You don't have a business. And when you have a business, you're going to make alterations to your model. The model you start with will not be the model you end with. It just won't happen. The same model does not work as your business maturates, as your business develops, and as your business grows. It will change. And this is why you see reconstruction or restructuring of businesses. This is why it happens, because they're growing, they're developing. And as they're doing that, they've got to change how they do business. And, and you will, too, if you have a legitimate business. You, you can't do it the same way. Taxes change. The way taxes are reported, the way income is distributed, everything changes. And you're going to have to look at that. You may have a model to start out with as having employees. Then you may move to a model with contractors. Why? Because taxes change. The way, the way you report them, the way it's structured, hey, it's better to do it this way as it's that way with your business. You know, you may find out that you were once the employee. Now you become a middleman. The structure of your business changes. Why? Because you're trying to make money. That's your goal, to make so, money. Hmm. So, hobby, I mean, you won't do any of that. Right. And a, ho- and a hobby or a side hustle will also not set up their business to be uh, recognized by the IRS, right? So they even just from the beginning, you won't even set yourself. Some people, some people do that as a uh, self-employed, right? They'll set themselves up by doing that or a DBA. They may do it to that extent, but they won't move on to the next thing, which as, if you're a business, you do need to move upon that and move to an LLC to protect yourself. You need to possibly go to an S-Corp to protect your company, whatever works best for you and your business model. But typically right. most businesses transition from, okay, I'm self-employed. I do it, uh, set it up for myself because it is a side hustle. I do this because I want to turn it into a business, but you're putting all the right tools in place to prepare for scaling, which is one thing that a lot of people, when they do side hustles or hobbies, is they don't prepare themselves to scale. That's the unfortunate yeah. truth. They don't plan five years, 10 years in advance because they don't really have a business plan. Truthfully, they just got into right, it because, right. hey, I needed money to survive. I just needed money and I just wanted to get some extra money. I mean, I make so much at the job I'm at. And I want to get some extra and that's typically why people get into it and they can't scale. And this is why it's so difficult for people to run and to maintain a business is because a business requires so much and you have to wear so many hats because you need to understand your taxes and accounting. If you're going to have a business, you better understand that. You better understand profit and loss else you're going to drive your business in the ground. And so you need to understand what an income statement, balance sheet. you need to understand those things. Doesn't say you have to do them. But you need to understand. You need to understand how they're working, why they're working the way. You need to understand whether or not you need employees or contractors or a combination of both. Mm -hmm. You need to understand how they would work for you if you have them. And a lot of people cannot understand that and therefore their business cannot scale. And the reason they cannot scale is the other reason is because they want to do everything themselves. You cannot do that if you're going to scale or grow a business. You have to relinquish the reins on a lot of things. And people will say, uh, hey, Chris, are you going to pay attention? Now it's my turn. I, oh, I, let it go. I, look, look. <laughs> hey, look, look, you know dude. what? Okay. I'm, we're back. I'm trying to we're help back. you. Hey, I'm, I'm trying back. to help you because you said a point that was one of my points as well. And what they do need to do oh is this right here, this book. Well, it's you called the E-Myth that. Revisited. Can't, you can't really can't see it because it's blurred no. out over here. But it's called The E-Myth Revisited. That's a book every entrepreneur that wants to grow a business should read. And it goes to the point of what you're saying. If you want to turn it into a business, you got to be able to actually make it grow, which means you can't work in the business. You got to work on the business. Two different things. A lot of people don't work on the business. They work in the business. And I would say that I was one of those people that did that. It took me a while to learn that. How can you work on the business and not work in it? Because guess what? When you work in it, you're wasting time, you're wasting resources when that could be allocated to, hey, how can I partner with people? How can I advertise better? How can I make my systems better and clear for everybody? But see, when you're doing a side hustle, you're not thinking about those things. And one thing somebody should recognize is a side hustle doesn't always translate to a business. A side hustle, I'll say it again, does not always translate into a business. I'll give you an example. People, side hustles will do stuff like, oh, I want to be a lift. I want to do Uber. I want to do uh, DoorDash. 
These don't translate to actually creating businesses. So not every side hustle is a business. Some side and hustles me, are just side those hustles. Are, those side hustles like that, those are reported to the IRS. So you, as that income will be reported because they're listing you as a contractor to their business. So you're really working for another business. Even I mean, mm -hmm. even though you think you're kind of independent or whatever, your own, you, you're really working for them. Uh, you have to do something to scale that. Uh, to scale that, you have to somehow get five people working for you, and you are getting all the information coming to you, and you're but, disseminating it out. And so, but I think a side uh, hustle is. I think a side hustle is. Uh, just another way to pull in income. That's my understanding. Right. It doesn't necessarily mean you got to be working for yourself independently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what, that's what it is. And a lot of people just continue with side hustles as opposed to businesses, because again, they can't transition. I think some information that you were saying, Chris was about, they have to work on the business instead of in the business and uh, people cannot translate or they cannot uh, move from in the business to on the business. They, they're so focused on working in the business that they really never work on the business. And until right. you work on the business, which is you have to be thinking basically a sales mentality when you're working on your business. In other words, you got to be looking for the new thing to help your business grow. So if that's connecting with this firm or connecting with that business in order that it would link you to more business, to more growth, to more opportunities. Those are things you'll be thinking about. How can I connect with them to bring more revenue in and yet keep all of these people that are connected to me uh, happy as well because they're looking for something from you. And what is it they're looking for from you, the business owner? More than likely, they're looking for a check. They want to be paid. That's probably the main thing they're looking at. And so at, with any person that you work with, including ourselves, we all say we want more money. We feel we're more valuable. Therefore, we want more money. And when you want more money, you, the business owner, has got to figure out a way to give them more money or appease them or let them see a vision that's greater than simply money or have them buy in to what you're trying to do in some form or fashion that is outside of money. Or you have to bring the carrot it has to be money. It may be some people are just money. It's just, hey, if you're not paying me X amount, I'm not doing it. So, you know, you got to figure out what that is. And then you build your culture. What do you want your culture to be like? Hey, is it, are we just mercenaries? You know, are we just out here? I'm just hiring mercenaries, people that only do it for the money because I don't want to hear from them. I don't want to talk to them. I just, hey, just do your stuff. Don't say nothing to me. Or are you building a culture of, hey, I, I want to love on you. I want to uh, make sure you're taken care of real well. Uh, it's not about money. I'm going to give you also other things. I'm going to give you nights out to hotels. I'm going to give you money to spend at restaurants. What, what is the culture you want to set up in your business? So those things are questions you've got to answer if you're going to move from a side hustle, let's say, until business. And these are what the things a business will do. It's not something you do on a side hustle. Side hustle, you're not going to do these things at all. You're not even concerned about them because you're just concerned, hey, did I did I drop my Uber person off and get my money? Did it hit my account? Oh, okay, great. Boom. You're done. But, you're so in off. summary, I feel like we, we're on the same page. A side hustle is very much so short term. The way that you're thinking is very short term. A business, and some people think short term even in business, but it's definitely more of a long term approach. The reason being is because you're trying to make something that's going to be profitable for the rest of your life. That's the goal of creating a business, right? Something you can give back, something that can be a value and something that you can get a return on profit that will last the longevity of the rest of your life, hopefully. You know, or your plan is to sell it. If you have something that's a value, then you want to sell it later. But I think also the commitment is different. When you have a business, the time and commitment you have to creating a business or you know, um, growing a business, scaling a business, it takes just way, way more time than it does for a side hustle. A side hustle is just something you can kind of, you know, do on the weekends, hit the sweet spot, get your four or $500 a weekend. You're great. Then you bounce back out. No worries. Right. But you're looking at it like as a business owner, you're like, look, what did I do for the month? And how can we replicate this next month? Or how can we do better than what we did last month? Or we did terrible last month. We may go out of business. You have to look at the hard facts of it. 
And also yeah. it is, it's all relying upon you. When you own a business, it's all relying upon you. And I would also say my last point would be is that you know that you have a business instead of a side hustle when you can look at your business as a source to be able to live off of. When you can truly look at it and say, hey, I can possibly live off of this. Maybe you're only making 50,000 profit. Maybe it's, if you can live off of it, that's what you can live off. Maybe it's 100,000, maybe it's 200,000 profit that you're bringing. If you can live off that as a as a uh, income or profit that you bring home, then, then you have, a, I believe, a solidified business. Now, if you have a side hustle, Typically, you're probably not going to be able to live off of just your side hustle. It's a side hustle for a reason, not the main hustle, right? There's a difference between the terminology. But I don't think the side hustle is what you live off. It's something that you're trying to create either or you're just trying to use it as to pay bills. Yeah. And even though they have a side hustle, I think people don't understand the advantages of having a business. There are a lot of advantages. I mean, a, a, a large amount of advantages. And some of those being that you can write off things that you couldn't necessarily do if you had a hobby. An example of that, let's say your phone bill. Everybody, all of us got these phone bills that we got, <laughs> these cell phone bills. Well, so whatever your cell phone bill, you more than likely, probably 99% of the time, you can write your cell phone off as part of your business venture because people have to get in contact with you. That's your cell number for your business. And guess what? You can typically write that off and that's probably not even questioned by the IRS. So that you've been paying uh, before, now you can simply write off. So I think uh, you, you don't necessarily understand all the write-offs that you can get from a business. There are a lot of them. And, and a lot of times they are uh, advantageous to you, which means that can lower your income stream or the amount of money that you're reporting to the IRS that you're making, let's say you get $500. Uh, you, you might say, well, I'm, I'm getting 500 on a side hustle and I report zero. You're right. You report zero. You, you know, that's, that's great for you. But if you had a business, you could, you know, get $500 right off the, uh, the, the money for your cell phone and maybe some other items. And you end up reporting to the government that you really make only $150. Or you, you, can report a loss. you can report yeah, a loss. Yeah, I'll report a loss. And then you report a loss, which is negative income, which means the government will end up paying you on your taxes you. when you file exactly. them. So you uh -huh. can get more money, making money, writing stuff off, plus getting money back from the government. I mean, it's it can be a win-win if you understand the system. Because that's one of the things, uh, we may not like the guy Donald Trump or things like that, but that's one of the things he did. He was good at working the system for his business and not paying much taxes. Now, you know, we might get angry for him because he didn't pay much taxes and he made all this money. But the man knew how to play the system. And if you know how to play the system, guess what? It'll work that way for you too. So it's not just Donald Trump gets to use the system. You can as well. Anybody who understands it and knows it, they can use the system. And when it's working to your advantage, you won't complain. You won't complain. You'll be, matter of fact, you'll be telling people, listen, I didn't pay no taxes. <laughs> you'll be you'll be excited about it. Or you pay very little taxes. You'll be like, hey, I use this loophole, that loophole. That's the advantages of knowing how the government process works. But you got you got to be able to, you know, file your taxes, do that type of thing. And that's how you know it's a business. Other than that, you got a hobby. So more than likely, you may have a hobby, but that's okay. Keep doing your hobby. Enjoy yourself. Have a great time. And if you want to transition to a business, Listen to what we got to say. And guess what? You may find some nuggets in here that you can use to help move you into a business and move away from being a hobby. And if we can help you, hey, thumbs up. We're glad we helped you.